Good morning, my brothers and sisters, coming to you from the great Pacific Northwest. We truly serve an awesome God, a God whose love for us knows no bounds, a God who is just and righteous and good and all these things, a God who has made way to be, for us to be reconciled to himself. Praise God for that. A word of encouragement comes from Isaiah chapter 53, starting at verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, as I think about these words today from Isaiah, and of course he's uh, foretelling about Jesus coming and, and, and Jesus dying on a cross uh, to pay the penalty for you and me, for our sins. You know, it's not as if God is just saying, hey, don't worry about it. There had to be a price paid. There had to be an atonement made. There, something had to be done in order to reconcile us. And so God did it himself by coming to earth in the form of a man and his son Jesus um, and dying on the cross and rising again that we might have eternal life. That's how we're reconciled to God. Uh, and I, I bring this all up today because I'm thinking here that Easter is just you know about three weeks away. And maybe we haven't made our Easter plans yet. Maybe we haven't decided what we're doing for Easter. Uh, maybe we haven't invited anybody to join us for Easter. You know, as, as Christians, uh, I think it's almost expected, or at least it used to be, that for Easter Sunday we'd be in church somewhere. Uh, but it should also be expected that we're going to try to invite people to come and to hear the message, to hear the good news as we, in a sense, celebrate the day that our Lord uh, was, rose from the grave. Um, you know, some churches have, you know, Good Friday services uh, and, and, you know, different things throughout the week of the Holy Week. Uh, all those things are great if you can get a part of them, but but certainly what, what should be the, on the heart of the Christian is inviting others to join us. And if you're not yet a Christian or you're not sure about all this, this is one of those times that, that you really want to go to church and hear what Jesus is all about. The truth is, is that we should be encouraged this time of year because it's a reminder that we've been saved, that the work that Jesus did on the cross so many years ago is still in effect today. The Bible tells us that when Jesus died, he died for all and for all time. Nothing else has to be done. Nothing else is going to come up that says this has to be done in order for people to be saved. That part is done. The only thing that we have to do to be saved is to believe in Jesus, to accept that he died for us, to you know turn from our sin and, and start walking with him. Um, and so that's the good news. That's the good news of the gospel. That's the good news for everyone today that we come in contact with. That's the good news for us. The work is already done. We just have to decide if we're willing to, to accept it, if we want to accept it, if we want to have it be part of our lives. I know I do. Uh, I'm excited to serve the Lord. He's an awesome God. doesn't mean life is always easy. Life is still stressful and hard at times, uh, but God is always there. And he's always faithful. God's always working on me, and, and I pray and hope that every day I'm a better person, uh, that you know I'm a better um, husband, father, father. Um, Grandpa, your know, brother, not sister, brother, uh, whatever the case could be, worker, um, friend, those type of things. I, I want to be the best person that I can be. I want to be the most like Jesus I want to be, I, I can be. And so I ask God to transform me to be like that because of what Jesus did on the cross. He is our greatest example, and we want to share what he's done. So I hope today that you're, you know, if you haven't already, you're starting to think about uh, the fact that Easter's coming, and it's a great time of year to invite people to join us for services. Um, you know, in the, in the church, we kind of say that there's two great services of the year or two great times of the year to invite people to join us, and that's Christmas and Easter. Uh, and so make sure this year that you're praying about who you can invite, that you're actually inviting them, um, making them known that you want them to be a part of whatever you're doing on Easter, and let's share the good, the good Lord with them. All right? Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your goodness and your graciousness and all that took place to not only create us, but to have a plan to restore us to yourself. Father, we thank you that Jesus came, that he lived among us and taught us, that he died on the cross and rose again, that we might have eternal life. I'm humbled, Lord, that you would love me so much, but you do. And you love each person watching this and each person that we know. And so, Lord, we pray that this Easter would be an Easter where hearts are ready, where people turn their hearts to you. Father, help us to know who to invite. May you lead us down a path and open doors that we could send invitations or ask personally or, or do whatever you'd have us to do and prepare their hearts in advance that when we ask them that even if they're not likely to come, that, in, that today would be the day that they would receive that invitation and accept it. Father, we're grateful for all that you're about to do and we want to be a part of the angels rejoicing in heaven as people come to know you. Father, please bless those today who need a special blessing. Father, those who are, are sick or, or have, need a physical touch, those who are... Uh, 
struggling with, with mental illness, those who are struggling emotionally, those who are struggling uh, financially or even spiritually, whatever the case. Bless people according to your will, and may you receive all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, there you have it. God loves you. God loves you so much that Jesus died on a cross for you. Let's think about Easter and the celebrations coming. Let's invite all those that we know in hopes that they'll give their hearts to Jesus. Have a great day. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.